Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White again, and uh, this is the second phase of uh, palatal separation. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm a general dentist, and I've practiced nothing but orthodontics for probably the last 45 years, and I've done some temporal mandibular joint work along with the orthodontics. But other than that, it's been nothing but orthodontics. Uh, here we'll go into the second part of, of uh, palatal separation, or just the second phase here. Uh, and this is a young man that I treated years ago. And it was the first one that I ever tried putting a spring in between the central teeth. He was in uh, school in Denton, uh, there in North Texas, and came down, and I was treating him, and he had a lot of crowding and a lot of uh, crumpled up teeth, <laughs> a lot of different problems in here, but uh, the main thing, we needed to separate his palate and develop his airway better, and to uh, get some more space in there, so we were going to extract some teeth on him also, which is a, either a good or bad thing, but uh, here I think it worked out good. So we started to separate this young man's uh, dentition. We, were, we went ahead and expanded teeth, I mean extracted the teeth, before we did the palatal separation, normally I don't do that. I'll just separate it and then we'll extract the teeth and start moving that in. But this was 1973. And uh, I had just treated uh, another young man that I couldn't separate his palate. And I finally just gave up. And I'm sure that young man has suffered all of his life because of the inadequate airway and his breathing problems and stuff like that could made a tremendous difference in his whole life. So I was trying to determine to get to separate this guy's palate. And uh, he came in one Saturday and he was griping and of course we were putting a lot of pressure on that and Palatal separators are very uncomfortable until the suture separates. And once they separate, you have very little discomfort with them. And sometimes they'll separate in the back a little bit, but not in the front. And this was a problem that we're having. Apparently, Dr. Donald Timms had the same problem. So anyway, he was there one Saturday about, uh, I think it's 10 o'clock in the morning or something, and I was real busy, and he was griping, and he wanted a ball off or something. I said, "No, we're gonna, we're gonna separate these things." And so he was there with his girlfriend from Denton at college, and uh, he was going down to Fort Worth and do a little shopping and stuff. And so I took him and set him in a chair, and I was a little bit hacked off because he was griping, so I made this spring out of Australian wire, and uh, I bent this thing and put it in his mouth kind of like that, which is not the way to do it, so don't try to try this. Uh, that's not the way you want to do it. So he came in, and uh, well, I just bent this thing, and activated it all the way down here and I put these two legs to catch on the side of the brackets you see right here and tied it in the brackets and it had 90 degrees activation in this Australian wire so it's a pretty potent uh, spring and I should have had better sense than to do this but uh, I put this in there and never having done this before and this was about 10 o'clock, I think it was 10 a.m. in the morning when I did this. And he and his girlfriend went downtown. And I luckily stayed there that afternoon. Uh, he came in at 4.30 that afternoon, and I was there. 
and he came in and said, I was window shopping and I didn't even realize that my teeth had separated. But my girlfriend told me, said, you got a space between your central teeth big enough to stick a match through. <laughs> I went up and looked in, or he said he went up and looked in a window and said they had this huge gap up there <laughs> in between his central teeth. And I just thank God <laughs> that I was there because I do think the teeth would have been sticking out like that. Now, this was a dumb thing for me to do, uh, but I learned something there, thank God. <laughs> it's something that was very important for me and many, many other dentists for years to come. We, we learned from this. Now, to my knowledge, nobody had tried putting spring or pressure between the central teeth up here to separate this anterior part of the suture where the bone is thickest and this was the first time I ever heard of it and first time anybody I've talked to had ever heard of it you know and we did this back in 5 of 1973 so that's uh, t 27 years plus about f 15 now so that was a long time ago that we uh, figured out that that's where you really need to put the force on older adults uh, Not necessarily all that old anybody now this guy was probably in his very late teens I don't know whether he was 20 or not at that time, but uh, anyway uh, he went off and without even knowing that they had separated they did this so naturally, boy, I got him in there and we took this thing out and uh, put just a regular conventional arch wire in there. We had separated it now, and we put a little spring, I think, to continue working with it to keep the roots going out like this because this thing would make the roots go together up at the top, but they separated them along the shaft of the, of the tooth. Uh, so take this for what it's worth. It was worth a lot to me because at that point we started putting pressure between the central teeth in palatal separation and we went on up and actually separated palates in their uh, 30s and late 30s and then we got a few and I had some students that had separated some people in their 40s and told me about it and uh, I've got uh, one of the cases I'll show here is 32 years old that we separated. She worked in the office. So this was the problem. We had the separator going, but I couldn't get it to separate back there. And if you're trying to push something apart with your arms back here and you're putting your arms out here to pull it apart, you just don't have a lot of force out there. And this is where the major part of the bone structure is. So, uh, just if if we'd have just sat down and think, sometimes we'd come up with some of these uh, answers and things. That the separator isn't really efficient here. It does good on these teeth. That's fine. But to separate the main part of the bone structure in this area, it takes force out in this area in adult or older patients so anyway there there it is it opens from 10 o'clock in the morning to about 4 30 that evening and it popped that suture down there well after the suture popped the guy was satisfied he wasn't he wasn't in discomfort is uh, the discomfort of a palatal separator primarily is the force that's put on the bone up there that it can't go apart. You know, once it goes apart, you don't have much uh, discomfort with them. You can wear them and they'll separate it and crank it on out. So anyway, that's what happened in this case. Now once they get uh, separated, you can leave them alone if you want to. They will tend to drift back together from the transeptal fibers 
they'll tend to come back together even though the the palate, the teeth will come back together, but the palate will stay apart, you see. So as we open that up, then we made some space in here for the uh, laterals to come in, and we also had made space down here for the bottom. We were expanding that. Now there's another uh, nice thing about putting a palatal separator up there. It forces your tongue down into the bottom part of your mouth, and the lower teeth frequently will expand right along with your upper teeth when you're doing this. It's just the tongue being forced down here. The tongue pushes out the teeth on the sides, and I have very little trouble expanding the lower arch after I've expanded the upper to have the palatal separator in. Now, we use the palatal separator, leave it in the mouth for sometimes six and eight months to so get used to it and the tongue just used to being pushed down there so it widens the lower arch out uh, really uh, good and becomes wider itself really uh, so when we really take it out the tongue fits back up in here okay and it usually we don't have a lot of trouble with the relapse on the palatal separations especially if you overcome the problem for the palate being narrow to start with, and usually that is because of functional habit, that the person is breathing through the a mouth and keeping it open and pushing his tongue out through here, and so you've got to find out why it's why the palate was narrow to start with. You see. And if you overcome that and get the tongue where it's fitting comfortably up in the roof of the mouth, then that's why anybody has this particular torque in their teeth. It has a complete, a particular shape to their jaw. It's shaped like the tongue, and the way the tongue functions and is used all the time. That's uh, that's what really makes the difference. And I've had that brought home to me uh, several different uh, times. But one time, especially of this lady who was, uh, I think she was 72 years old, and she had a collapsed maxilla, and uh, and also the mandible was fairly collapsed, the mandibular teeth. And she wrote a note to me and told me, said, and when I was 69, I had beautifully straight teeth. They took my tongue out because of cancer, and now look at my teeth. Her teeth had just all crumpled up. The bone didn't totally go down, but the uh, teeth leaned in, and just all kind of mess in there. I looked in her mouth, and <laughs> God, you could see almost into her stomach. So uh, we said, well, we need to straighten your teeth up, and we need to have some retainers put on there that you'll wear the rest of your life, you know. Well, this is kind of dangerous, uh, swallowing stuff, so you don't want anything small. It's because you can swallow. And when you don't have a tongue, man, you can't eat. You just get one bite off of <laughs> of half the stuff, and the stuff goes in your cheek, you might get to chew it again, but the rest of it, it's gone, you see. So uh, eating is a real problem without a tongue. You don't think about that until you really sit down and think about it in her, her case. All right, so this, uh, this young man, we were able to go ahead with the orthodontics, and I don't want to take a lot of time up on that. But this is where we came to the idea of expanding the upper arch by working with the palatal separator and spring between the upper central teeth. That's open coil spring that we've condensed down. It looks almost like closed coil spring. Now here we want the once we get the space open, you can let it come on back together, and then not too long after, start opening up space for the 
laterals and shoving the cuspids and things back I like that so anyway this is what we did this is back when we had to band everything and that was a chore so I'm gonna just run through the mechanics of orthodontics is um, back then was tough you know when uh, some people I wish they could go in and have to do orthodontics with totally banding banded teeth it it was a real chore it was a real chore coming out of it I'll explain that in some other lectures and everything so anyway we straightened that up got the separator out finally and went through the orthodontic part and he had a little class 2 problem here we were in class 2 elastics and a little midline deviation and by and large it wasn't a big deal and you don't use this too much anymore but we used to put a ligature wire and they kept buttons on these teeth go through the arch wire here and come back here and twist that thing down and man you could tighten that up like mad and that it would give you a good arch form in here and also close space and you'd be closing from the outside and from the inside when you close from the inside they tend to move this way close the outside they tend to move out the other way so you have to if you don't use any lingual force then you've got to have a pretty good arch where it has a good inward bend in here if you're closing the teeth together then we've got most of the space gone except the band space here now we got a little midline deviation and we had a kind of a we wanted to make sure we had plenty of width in this so we're wearing elastics like that that's a kind of a strange elastic arrangement and then a midline to correct the midline down here and this is kind of a class two all right we go ahead and finish this guy it's 1976 i believe <coughs> when we got through and that's two of 76 and when you first come out of these banded cases it uh, they just are not what you would like for it to be you hope they will chew in and and they'll squeeze the teeth together with elastics and and you just pray a lot when you take bands off man you say man i hope this thing comes out right so we can take an impression and that's where they started making positioners to reposition the teeth in case they slipped so i never did like to use them i tried to get them as close as i could and kind of anticipate the amount of torque you had to give them more torque than you wanted and then when you closed all this space the, you lost a lot of your torque in doing that and anyway we finished this guy out and we were close in space down here you see this little rubber band going around all the way around the mouth and they're closing that and in here we we'll put a retainer and we'll squeeze this together and bring it back you have to watch that you don't bang the upper front teeth into your lower front teeth doing that so anyway the guy worked out pretty good that's 1976 we always put a bite plate on uh, cases like that and so we finished him out in 76 he looked like that now here is here is the same case in 1988 so it's 12 years later and you see how this is socked in you see not perfect anything you see the six key the occlusion back here and the midline's pretty well on and center line looks good now the guy brushes the heck out of them or he's really doing a he needs to sweep down on it like that and have to clean underneath there some and have his teeth a little better taken care of so anyway we go along and finish him up let me pause this I'm doing a, 
a recording. I don't know whether it deposited or not. <laughs> uh, yeah. didn't stop and it didn't pause. Well, we'll have to cut out a bunch of this, but anyway, this is 1976, and then you can see how the teeth, if you get teeth in the ballpark, then they will start erupting toward each other until they kind of intermesh and they have to fight it out with each other. Now this is 1968 which is like 12 years after the other teeth, after the other picture. Now there's several things happened here. He probably quit wearing a retainer for sure sure because his bite has deepened some and I'm going to go back and look at the other you see where these spaces were together here and you see the height of the teeth along here and these teeth have moved down in here really quite good uh, and the bite is close to some extent now let's just look at the other one again and you see if the bite closed down some, these teeth hit and the, the back, the lower teeth didn't come in some, so we got some spaces. So if your bite closes, it'll tend to space up down there. Now this just really sucked in good. Uh, when you look back, I mean, the, this distal buckle cuffs the upper six year bolts are supposed to go down that groove man it couldn't get out there much better than that so there's some other things probably if the bite hadn't deepened so much then you could have kept these teeth together here and this so he apparently quit wearing his retainer and his bite deepened again as it did there's either a space opens in the centrals or you get crowding in the lower anterior or some of both when uh, the bite begins to deepen. Now when we look at the 1976 upper, that's not too good of a shot, but you can see the spaces are all together and everything else. Now when we come in and look at the, the upper, I mean this guy really <laughs> hadn't been taking care of his teeth. I mean, I spent all that time working with him and doing this and him just let a tooth just flat <laughs> rot out of feeling come out. I want to take something and hit him over the head with it. You know, I spent all that time working with that son of a gun and then he let his teeth do like that. I mean, I, I wanted to kick him really. <laughs> Maybe sometime that would do us both good. It would do me a lot of good anyway. But the bite deepened and this separated and this cavity came in here so it makes it even deep, deep and worse or he lost a big filling and hadn't even bothered to put it back in there. So that chaps the heck out of you. Uh, okay on the bottom it was 1976 looked pretty good. This is a kind of a freakish bicuspid. See how narrow it 
thing is, and it's not a good contact there. Now, with brackets, you can squeeze these together like that better. But with bands, you have all this band space. And if the cusp goes down between another one, here you'll have a gap. You can have a space in between your teeth that way. Uh, so it's 1988. And we go back. That space was there when it started. And the space is there when we had it in 1988. He's also got some rotation of these teeth. And we didn't have any fixed steel on the bottom. That kind of affects that. But if you go back and look here, they were fairly lined up. That one's not in line good. And this one right here, this cusp would need to be rotated out in that direction. So we didn't do it ideal by a long shot, you know. But uh, it stayed pretty good. So here he is, he's finished up and happy, and we worked with him uh, on this thing. Now here's another uh, case here that I think I'm going to pause on this one and come. Okay, this uh, case next. Well, the next case here we're going to show we've got to get the thing where it's rolling this young lady has a drastic palatal problem and uh, you don't look at it you don't recognize it Looking at her facial structure, it looks pretty doggone normal in here. And but when I show you her teeth, you'll see the difference here. And when she smiles, she's got a nice smile, nice smile line. Very pretty young lady. Now we look at the teeth. And they fit over here in the groove on this side. And they've got this tremendous cross bite over here. Now, most likely, if you got the jaws apart and got them relaxed, there, there would be nearly the same amount over here as is on this side. But when she goes to chew, she shifts over here to chew, and these teeth just kind of miss in between there. And so the midline is off. I think this, I believe that's the midline on it, and the midline here. Well, the midline is probably something like that, but then it shifts over that direction when she closes together. Now, this looks like a pretty tough orthodontic case, really. You look at it and you think, man, that's going to really take a lot of effort to do that case. You look at this side, beautiful class one relation. No problem at all over on the right side of the mouth. That, that looks good. <laughs> In fact, you can't hardly do them this good and get them to stay from then on that way. It's uh, uh, it's tough. Now look at it from the other side. You say, man, that's a real difficult orthodontic case. But it's really not a difficult orthodontic case because you've got a real good face. The teeth is a good location in the face. Uh, this, uh, just every, there's a lot of things going for it here. But what you need is something to just enlarge this maxilla and get it to jump over on that side. And that's what you've got with a palatal separator. Now, a lot of dentists uh, doing orthodontics, and uh, I, I assume that the orthodontic students in the school learn the difference, but I'm not real sure on some of them. Uh, anyway, the this case is rather simple if you do it correctly. And so we went in and we separated the palate and we jumped this thing over, this about like that, or more, 
and got it fitting in the lower arch good you can see how it fits in here it's in a cross bite from here all the way almost back into the back side of the mouth there now this is a relatively easy orthodontic case if you know how to manipulate a palatal separator and how to make it go unilaterally instead of bilaterally and, and I hope everybody realizes if you push over here with so many pounds you're going to have the same amount on the other side it doesn't make a darn who you are it's going to be the same <laughs> you push two apart if you pull together it'll be the same on each end of the pulley now we don't want these to move but we wanted this part over here to move over and correct this thing and jump over. Well, right off, a lot of people starting off or just haven't had to experience something, don't know how to make this thing go unilaterally. Uh, it, it is very easy to do, but you have to uh, use elastics in doing that. And I'm going to shut this uh, view off right here and just make a kind of a screen. And I'm going to draw these molars in. And this will be the side. That's not real beautiful drawing. But now on this side over here, we've got a molar. It's coming down something like that. And we've got a molar down here on the bottom that's coming up something of this form you know it's more out this way now we want to put a palatal separator in here and we want to move these teeth over where well, we this tooth's got to go way on over here where it fits in something like that and this will come back in some now we have to erase that part and just think about how it would be here. So let me see if I can get the thing to take part of it away. Let me just start over again here. Now I'm going to put the lower molars like they should be in the upper molar. It's going to be sitting in here, something like that. And the lower molar would be down on something this way. Now I want to put a separator in here and I want this to move and I want this to stay where it is. So you hook and you put this in, you know it's going to have the same amount of force this way as this way here both both forces are going to be the same we don't want this one to move any if we can help so we run a rubber band around the tooth yeah this stupid thing uh, and come up and hook it on the outside over here now this rubber band is trying to pull against the force of the palatal separator now on this side, you run a rubber band here and go over and put it on this side. And this rubber band is pulling in the direction of the pull or the force that's in the palatal separator. This one's going opposite to it. This one's going in the same direction. And if this elastic anywhere close to resembles the force of the palatal separator which uh, not likely to be as much but if you keep pressing this rubber band and going with it then actually the movement will be in this side right here it will move over here this tooth will move out a little bit and this tooth will move probably out just a wee bit if your rubber band's not stout enough in there and, but this tooth will end up over on this side right here. And that just works that way. So 
so you have to believe it but you have to put this uh, in there so that's what we did when we separated and this these teeth over here you see were being pulled like that and this one was being pulled like this and here with those motor cross battle elastics all right so and you straighten that up and, and you got a beautiful case real easy you might have a little class 2 problem but not much at all I don't know what happened in here uh, shouldn't have should torque this tooth in right here right here to keep that I hope we did some of that I may be seeing the next few pictures in here but this is a simple orthodontic case if you know how to use the right tools to do it and you can do this case in a very short time and treat it out and it makes you look like a hero <laughs> and if you get slapped a good pat on the back well take it because you're going to have sometimes when you should have gotten a pat on the back and you won't get it okay here's this girl got a beautiful smile this will go with her the rest of her life i mean she's going to have that from now on and uh, that is that is very good that you can come along with a little bit of glue and a little wire and a few little old brackets and a palette of separator and things like that and the tissue down here is real good at this point and that young lady has a wonderful set of teeth now and she'll have them all of her life if she takes care of them properly you just can't hardly wear them out in your lifetime and uh, so that makes me feel darn good you know to do that to, to come in with a little effort on my part to come in and help somebody like that and that keeps you going so she looks good and she'll be a pretty lady and she'll have beautiful teeth the rest of her life if she'll just take care of them. Now that one picture look a little bit on the full side, but as she matures, that'll go down some. Now, you should go in on her case. It's this fullness. And be sure and get the wisdom teeth out. I think that'll be the one thing that'll help keep it from being too full. And she's not brushing them or cleaning them as good as one, but pretty young lady and here they are at this point of her life they look darn good now that was on the treatment going up to this and we ended up with her in really good shape now uh, there's another case I think coming up here that's a little worse than that one this young lady again looks very nice I mean I don't see any uh, excess vertical height of the, the, the facial structure just looks good everything going around looks quite well like that uh, now when she smiles now you got a different problem and it's strange to think see how the teeth can be that crooked and out of place and everything and the smile not look that much now this young lady has a cross bite from cuspid all from the left cuspid excuse me this all the way around to the other side of the mouth now <laughs> and to look at her and look that good it's hard to think about that now if you look at this case it looks like oh god that's going to be really tough and uh, people think it's tough and so you go in there and wave a few magic wands over it and put a palatal separator in there and put some of these motor cross bite elastics that coming in in there this this will have to come this way I'm sorry and uh, lead you wrong there so we're gonna have to pull from up above to the buckle over here and from up above to the lingual 
down on this side, you see, as we separate the palette. And this midline, you see, it's way over there. It should be over here somewhere. Let's watch it. You see how it's tilted off over to this side. Now, most likely, she is not that far off, but she tilts over to that side to some extent. So we're going to go ahead and show other pictures of her face. And uh, this model's kind of bleed, bled out here. It's not... Uh, can't see it as good as you want to. It's just a, a lateral tooth. It's just totally crowded out right in here, you see. And there's a central and a central and a lateral and a cuspid over here. And this one is totally blocked out right there. Now, we go in and the lower looks pretty decent at this point. <coughs> so we come in and we shouldn't have put the spring over here. I made a mistake in that. You should put the spring right between the teeth so until you get the thing separated. Now I put the spring thinking about opening the space for the lateral, which is wrong, and this was, uh, uh, this shouldn't have <laughs> done it really. Uh, so we go ahead and put the spring in here now instead of there. Now, once you get it separated and get really going good, then you can come in and put your spring over on that side. But it's best to not try to put spring there while you're separating the palate. You just were able to manhandle it like it was. So anyway, there's a deal showing you about the spring. All right, we put the palatal separator. Now, watch the sutures tilted off in this direction. See, it's coming back like that. Watch this suture straighten out as you go through there, and you're going to have to crank this thing. This will come apart, too. And let's see. All right, the lower straighten it up good. Well, I jumped through a lot of treatment in here, but what we actually did, we separated the palate and then pushed the central back over in place where it just followed by the transeptal fibers. And remember this midline was over here and this central midline was over here somewhere, way over here. And it came back over. And the whole mechanism kind of shifts and changes and moves around like a and, and people think about it as if it's some chunk of concrete. And then still old surgeons and uh, orthodontists, and many of them think that if, if these teeth are in a bad crossbite over here and you want to move them over there, you've got to move the bone structure. Now, palatal separation does move the bone, which they understand that, but if you want to bring those teeth out without separating the palate, you can push these teeth out if you take them out in a unit and they will carry their bone structure along with them. You just kind of go slow and just expand it and the bone will go with the roots. The alveolar bone goes with the roots and I will guarantee you that over a period of time the basal bone that supports the alveolar bone shifts to where it supports the alveolar bone where it is. I don't have any double blind studies and I'm not going to live long enough to do it. But that, I can tell you that is the way it's going to be. All right. So we've lined these teeth up. And this is a relatively simple case. Now, if you've got the centrals in their right spot and the right torque and everything in here, and you've got a little space between this and this tooth is interdigitated and this one is and this one then don't try to squeeze this together and move this out of interdigitation just build this tooth up a little bit to have it fill that in now, so don't let a midline 
make you move the teeth out of their inner digitation because that's where they're going to go in the end. Uh, here we're rotating one and like you can come in here and hook this tooth over here and you hook a rubber band to the I mean a little chain elastic to this arch wire and come around and then hook that in the bracket but don't have it over there and it'll spin that tooth that's the most efficient way to rotate one that I know of okay the case looks like that and the rest of it finishes just regular orthodontics so we crank this thing apart now as you're dragging this tooth up it's not going to have the same amount of torque that this one does so you've got to add some torque to this arch wire right in here and so many guys doing orthodox do not know how to add the torque to it and you need to put more torque in there you say well they've got a certain amount of torque in the bracket well the this is true and you put a rectangular wire in the bracket even if you put one that completely fills it up and it's supposed to display or bring about that amount of torque that's in there but the closer this tooth gets to the correct torque the less and less and less the force gets and the tooth will just take forever to get there it may never get there. so if you want to torque a tooth and get it there put a little extra torque flex it get it in there and pull it up in position and remember it take it down take it out again and you can torque any darn tooth you want to in anybody's head as long as it's not ankylosed just by adding more torque to it and that's uh, what this tooth will hopefully I'll add some torque to it I don't know what I did here I'll have to see well, it's got a little more now than it had, and this is later on down the line, and it's got a little more, so apparently we've got some torque going into it. Uh, now, it doesn't look too bad now. It looks like it could use a little more than that. Say, so here's the, and I probably never got it ideal, so uh, I try but I don't get them all there now this is interdigitated and it looks pretty doggone good now over a period of time this will settle in a lot more you've seen how they'll do uh, it doesn't necessarily stay like that so anyway there we were to start with and there it is now see after we finished uh, it, I hope it's that way now that was 1986 this will soon be 19, uh, 2016, so the 86, 96, and then 100, uh, 2006, 2016. It'll be a long time ago, and I hope her teeth still look this pretty. And probably they do. They look good. So it was like that. Now it's like that, you know. And that's... Uh, doing what I think real good and it's good to check underneath there if you've got some big marginal ridges in here these teeth cannot stay straight if they're hitting one here and not over here you see that tooth will rotate it'll rotate in this direction if it hits the marginal ridge this will rotate the other direction uh, so you go in and trim the marginal ridges off up here and leave a little shift in that area so here's the girl again now this particular case right here I am gonna hold up and not go through it okay the this is the last case I want to show on this palatal separation it's gotten too long or already but I feel like I'm going to have to finish this particular case uh, this is a lady that works for me and uh, she had a mouth breathing problem from her youth up and she's got way too much vertical dimension of the face 
she looks great when she smiles, but when she closes her lips, she has real problems with this. And, uh, you know, now her teeth are all crumpled up and squeezed together. And she doesn't breathe good. And she's been breathing with a problem like this for her whole life. And she's like 32 years old at the time we did this deal right here. And she also has a short mandible. She's got some TMJ problems, so we had to advance her mandible. And it's a complicated case. At the uh, beginning, people shouldn't uh, get mixed up with these this time. This is a hard case, but we were able to treat it in a very few months. We finished her quick, but we didn't really get through it. She got out of herself. She was working there and got some of the girls to take her stuff off. I should have clobbered them, really. Uh, but you've got all kind of problems in here. And uh, a real narrow arch, crowded lower anterior. She had periodontal trouble in addition to uh, TMJ problems and uh, all this crowding and uh, a lack of ability to breathe. So the most important thing is get in there and straighten up the function and get her breathing good. And so that's what we primarily were hoping to do. But we had a TMJ problem. We had a class 2 on one side and a class 1 on the other side. Now this side is perfectly class 1. And uh, now she's got a TMJ problem, so I've got to advance her out here, something like this. So instead of a class 1 case on the right side, we've got a class CL class 3 case instead of that. Now, so we got to deal with that uh, problem. Now on the other side, we got a class 2, you see. So when we advanced our mandible forward, the class 2 reduced quite a bit. It's almost like a class 1 and on one side and a, a class 3 on the other side when you get through with the thing. Uh, okay, so we were going in to do the palatal separator. That's all I'm primarily going to talk about because we're getting up close to an hour with this uh, tape. So we put a palatal separator in her mouth and we banded all of these teeth and just put a bar going back on the second molar. But these are all banded. And we put this thing in and worked for a week or so after we had made it and got it fitting real good and then cleaned it real good and put it in and cemented it way up in place and all that. Now, <clears throat> on the bottom arch, we didn't use anything like that, but we widened it with a kind of a, what we call a big daddy arch, but I'm not going to get into that too much with this palatal separation. It's taking too long. Uh, so anyway, we were able to... Uh, go in here and expand the palate with that even at 32 years of age we used a spring to do that we also widened this out down the bottom but I'm going to cover that in another lecture so I don't want to uh, get into that too much we separated this palate and I put spring between her teeth up here and we started cranking this apart and she said she was working for me all the time, a very sharp gal that learned orthodontics and learned how to really do good uh, performing orthodontics for people and uh, helping do what they can do, you know, as much as they can do. Uh, anyway, we got this apart, and in, in two weeks, she said she could breathe better. Uh, she had s suffered with a lack of airway for her whole life, 32 years. Uh, I guess as a kid, maybe it was a little different. And then in two weeks after we started cranking this thing apart, she said she could breathe better. So now we used a spring in between her centrals at 32 years of age and cranked this apart. 
and if I've watched this lady for years and uh, have had no ill effects from this I'm going to run through this this type of a large expanding arch you don't have to try to do that you can do it with a regular big daddy arch if you want to okay and we advanced her we put a ramp, uh, ramped retainer and kept her forward like that which I'm going to cover a lot of that in another lecture uh, but anyway here she is now she's got a retreated mandible so we advanced the mandible out not that far but about something like this you know and she looks darn good with it and we hold it out there over a period of time and now here she we showed her how to smile and stuff like that uh, if you've got a excess vertical height of the face and you shut your mouth you're going to look bulgy and too full just smile and keep your mouth open kind of like Cara Burnett used to do before she had her surgery and uh, you'll look nice <laughs> and that uh, looks great she's a beautiful woman like that but when she closed her lips together it wasn't all that pretty so anyway we did a palatal separator on her at age 32 and it worked out and we got her breathing right and we put her in reten retention with a bite plate and uh, we will watch her for years and like there we are with the palatal separator and there's a spring in between the teeth here you can hardly see it right there and the large arch wire in the bottom so he she moved off to Georgia and did a lot of orthodontics in a, a pedodontist office there in Atlanta she was her main orthodontic assistant and uh, knew a lot about orthodontics and everything and she got a little graft over these teeth she had a little periodontal problem in there I don't know how necessary that was but that was 92 and I've got pictures of her up into the uh, 2006 I think I'm gonna just run through these real quick and You can see her later on down the line here. I think we've seen some of these twice. Ninety seven. I'm going to pause this for a second. Well, I don't have any of the pictures of 2000. I've got some 2006 and even later on her. And then we saw her the, in Florida not long ago and took some pictures of her. But uh, she has corrected her... Uh, I'm going to have to get this little deal back on there. Nine, 97, it was out good, and it's still there in 2016. I got pictures of her in Florida at her annual meeting. And uh, so this is, uh, excuse me, I'll go back. This is 2006 right here. I'm sorry, I do have some of it. And that is the way her teeth look, 2006. And uh, this is the other side. And the, the bottom teeth are bonded together down there. And the upper teeth, like that. And so that's years after we finished, and this lady is still holding up good. And so I'm promoting palatal separators, and it's almost an hour since we started this. So I hope that you'll forgive me for dragging it out. But uh, palatal separators are a wonderful part 
of orthodontics and the contribution you make to people and get them where they can breathe properly. If you don't get them functioning properly, you're going to have difficulty retaining them and you will have difficulty doing it. So try to figure out what's wrong. How did they go wrong? What went wrong? And if you can get around that and correct the problem that caused the real dental problem, that will be a very important thing for you to do. So I'm going to sign off here and we'll pick up another subject uh, later on and try to uh, do a lot of these before I pass out of this picture. I like to pass on as much of this stuff so you won't have to reinvent some of these wheels. So we'll just stop at this point.